Morning all. Well, I have another item of post here, so it's post bag. And I think this one is from icstation.com, if I'm not mistaken. And it's a display, but uh, it's an LED matrix display. Let's have a look inside the bag. So yes, this says 8 by 8 LED RGB, so this is red, green, blue, uh, matrix Arduino, and uh, it's quite a large 8 by 8, and they're quite uh, far apart, these lights, but um, they're RGB. So this is an RGB display panel with this very nice large uh, RGB 8 by 8 array of LEDs, so that's 64 in total. Now I just took this off, but I can't quite see where the pin one registration is. It says pin one down in there on the display, but there's no corresponding number one on the board. So I think I might make a little mark for that. Now let's have a look at the interconnections. We've got uh, V in and ground and they're paired and that's on a four way terminal block. Cause I imagine when this thing is fully lit up with all 64. Well, it's 64 times three, of course, because there's three LEDs uh, inside each of these little modules. This could take a fair bit of power. So that's where we'll put uh, five volts. Now on this connector here, and it's a socket on one side and a plug on the other. So these are clearly intended to be daisy chained up. We have DTR, ground, TX, RX, and VDD. Well, that sounds a little bit like the five pins used for Arduino style USB to serial connecting up. But we've also got another ground and SCL and SDA. And that sounds a little bit like I squared C. Now there's also a standard uh, ISP header in system programming with uh, pin one as MISO and MOSI there, S clock, reset, ground and VCC, the standard arrangement. So we could program the microcontroller on here uh, via this ISP header. There's also six pins here, which I think if I take the display off is a switch. Now on the board, we have three main devices. Uh, here we have an AT Mega 328P. Let's see if that'll focus in. So that may or may not have an Arduino bootloader in. I haven't really looked at this thing yet, so I'm just making guesses at the moment. But um, there are hints that this might have an Arduino bootloader in it. We also have this thing, which is a M54564FP. And there's another chip here. Which way up is it? Yes, and it looks like a DM... 163 is that? Uh, there's a 16 meg crystal next to the DM163 chip. There's a 16 meg ceramic resonator next to the uh, 80 mega 328P. 5 volt regulator, so possibly the uh, voltage here could be higher than 5 volts. And a switch labeled terminal or header. Now it looks like this terminal header switch is connected through to the regulator. So I suspect this is a power source selection switch, uh, either taking power from this four way terminal block or the header plug or socket, whichever way it comes in. Uh, so I've connected a 2.1 millimeter adapter to that, put the switch to terminal and I'm gonna play safe by putting five volts on here initially. So I'll just put the uh, display back on the top. So my power bank is on 5.0 volts. Let's plug in and see if it, oh, it does. And it's going through some sort of color pattern thing. Well, that's very pretty. Now, given that it's the 23rd of December, I could stop the project here, stick this up on the mantelpiece and call it a Christmas decoration. But I think I'd like to look a little further into how to program this thing. It looks a little bit weakly lit, so I'm just gonna push the voltage up and see how far I can go. That's 
that's six. Six and a half, seven, seven and a half. So it does seem that the regulator is uh, regulating this voltage that I'm putting in to the input down to five volts. I hope it is anyway. So I'm just watching these patterns actually at the moment and uh, well I can't quite work out whether this is random or whether it's uh, a programmed sweep of colours. It's interesting, sort of semi-random maybe. So here we are on icstation.com and this is the item the LED RGB matrix module driver board 8x8 uh, for Arduino it says but it sort of has its own Arduino built in it's item ID 3607 uh, currently $25.57 although I noticed there's a thing up there that says site-wide 20% off now there are three images here of this thing the first two uh, look right the third one is clearly not right that's of something else I think that's a non-RGB uh, LED matrix driven by HC595s, if I remember correctly. Now, there's a load of information here in the description, including lots of features, but there are no reviews, and there's no link to software or downloads or anything like that. So let's have a look at these uh, other chips on here. Let's have a look at the... M54564FP. Right, well now this appears to be my first clue. I've typed in M54564 and this second item here, electronicslab.com blog, talks about a rainbow Duino and a color Duino. And uh, electronicslab.com has an item from the 6th of March 2011, Teed Studio Color Duino, a preview. Now this looks very, very similar indeed. There are some slight layout differences. The switch is the other way around. The ISP headers in a slightly different position, but this is essentially the same item. So is this a Colorduino? The Colorduino was inspired by Seed Studios Rainbow Duino. Uh, form factor is very similar. Now this says both boards are based on the 80 Mega 368. Uh, this one isn't. This has got the 80 Mega 328. And here we are. Also released an Arduino library that works with both the Color Duino and ITED's Arduino RGB Matrix Driver Shield. That's worth a try. So now back to this M54564FP. This appears to be. Uh, a Mitsubishi 8-way uh, 8-circuit eight eight output sourcing Darlington transistor array uh, what features have we got driving available with PMOS IC output or with TTL output okay that makes sense that's for driving either the columns or the rows of the LEDs now what about this DM163 Okay, this is an 8x3 channel constant current LED driver designed obviously specifically for RGB LED arrays. The DM163 is an LED driver that comprises shift registers, data latches, 8x3 channel constant current circuitry with current value set by three external resistors and 64x256 grey level PWM function unit. Wow! So this is Seed's Rainbow Duino. Now this looks a bit different. This has got USB on board, and I, USB there, and I would imagine that's an FTDI. It is an FTDI chip. And the drivers up here near that edge connector, uh, there are two of them. So that's obviously uh, a newer model, would be my guess. Also this has, in the title, R80 Mega 328. So this does use the 80 Mega 328 microcontroller and here's a uh, IT Studios color Duino now there's a V1.3 and a V1.4 and if I look at the layout particularly the reset switch there on the edge ah, we don't have that switch on the 1.4 so it looks like a hybrid of these two 
Uh, no, I take it back. The Colorduino V1.3 is an absolute match on everything. The reset switch, the slide switch, the position of the chips, the position of the ISP header. So I think I've finally identified what this is. It's a Colorduino V1.3. And on the wiki for Colorduino, we have data sheets for the DM163 chip, for the M54564, a schematic demo code, and fritzing parts. So I just clicked the demo code for Colorduino, and it's downloaded a zip folder. So now I can probably get into the software for this and perhaps change a few things. Now, all there is in the demo code uh, zip folder is a font and a PDE file, and I'm pretty sure PDE was the forerunner to .eno, so that must be the uh, sketch. So let's have a look at this font. So that has a large array uh, of ASCII characters, it would seem, numbers, uppercase, lowercase, and then something called PIC, which we assume is some sort of picture, and there's lots of data to make up this picture, whatever that might be. Now I've had to uh, fiddle about with this uh, this demo sketch a little bit. Uh, I've renamed it an Eno from a PDE. I think PDEs still work, but uh, I did that just to make it a bit simpler. I've also had to include an additional an additional Arduino dot H in the includes because it kept coming up with an error related to variable types. Uh, that seems to have solved that. So now I've plugged in um, a USB to serial converter onto this header and uh, on the back the header pins are all marked. So I'm using VCC ground, TX, RX and DTR for reset. Uh, I've had to put the switch across to header rather than terminal so that it takes power from the header connector and we have a little red light on so that looks alright. Now I'm going to try and upload the sketch. Well, that seemed to upload. Uh, the blue light on the USB to serial did its bright and then dim for verify. So I think there's some new code in here. Um, I'll just put the display back on and put the power on. Well, the pattern has changed and it's really quite boring. It looks a bit weird actually because um, some of these when that green panel comes on, it's not as bright as this green panel. And there are lots of little very dim dots on the other parts of the display. So certainly taken the new sketch, it's not a very bo uh, not a very interesting demo. Well now, this appears to be a delay variable i, so I've shortened that from a thousand to a hundred, so that things just run a bit quicker. And a lot of this display character stuff was all commented out so I've just put it all back in and now things are looking a little bit more interesting. So this is what we've got now. Now it's not sort of recognisable characters or anything like that. I'm just wondering perhaps whether this is designed to be um, several of these display blocks cascaded together. But at least we've got some movement there. And I now have a sketch which compiles and uploads and which I can uh, play around with and create my own patterns if I can work out what all the uh, software elements do. So maybe I can start programming this thing to do well, to be a Christmas decoration. Well now there's the thing. Now I'm getting recognisable characters passing through the display and all sorts of colours and patterns and interesting things. And what did I do? I turned the display 180 degrees, so my pin 1 alignment was completely wrong. Now I suspect that the constant current driver in there uh, protected anything from going disastrously wrong, but it uh, seems that the display was either fitted the wrong way around when this thing arrived, or I somehow mixed it up and got it the wrong way around. Curious, but that's making now a lot more sense. Now they've put the reset switch right at the edge of the board, which is good because you can just about get at it. And I've added a thing to fill the screen with colour. And then it starts going through all the letters of the alphabet. Probably actually 
uppercase and then lowercase and then numbers I guess I've slowed it back down to one second per screen that's perhaps a little bit slow and so finally here's what I've managed to do H A P P Y C H R I S T M A S Happy Christmas!